Now, as a true Pentecostal, we get addicted of always feeling it. <laughs> it has to be like an addiction, a little more and a little more and a little more. To the point in which it becomes too much. So I, I got oversaturated at the age of 24, and then I arrived to ABS. Then I became the knowledge process. Now let me take you back to that Anabaptist decision. It was Thanksgiving, and in Thanksgiving, instead of helping my mother set up, I went for a prayer meeting at 7 o'clock in the morning to meet my baptism pals, sisters and brothers, that were going to go to the Rio Limon of Iguala, Puerto Rico. Very cold waters coming from the center of the mountains coming through Alessandro. So we met Hector Caballero. And he tested us, each one individually. He tested us in communion. And he said, I think you're ready. And I did that. Now, my mother and my grandmother had already totally prohibited, don't you do that, that those people do. Don't deny your first baptism. But I needed to do something that was truly mine, my faith. And later, we're all Anabaptists. As I walked in and this, the table was set for Thanksgiving and they saw my hair wet, they knew I had done it. <laughs> against their culture, against them. And that rejection started my faith of explaining over again, why am I doing this? Rejecting my own heritage. Letting go of something for something new. I grew up in that age of maybe 18 years and a half to me. But I knew it was the right thing to do at that moment of my life. Baptism is a very important time. This movement, the Anabaptists, started with that simple act. Pouring water with each other and claiming the, the coming about of a new body. That's why I wanted this song to be sung. So most important for Christ. And only God knows why it brought us all together. People who think differently. People who may look at realities differently. To make this body. His 12 followers were very different individuals from different careers, background, if you want. Yet they formed the leadership. The Anabaptists, as we all know, is a group of people, as many writers have said, quite diverse. And sometimes we didn't make our own mind, our minds. The price that they had to pay rejection and death for that baptism step. Another story of baptism, re-baptism. As an Anabaptist, I was waiting for my children to come up and say, Mommy, Bobby, I'm ready. So one of them said, at age 12, <coughs> the other one at age 14. My youngest came and said, Mommy, I want you to, take, to be the one that baptizes me, to go into the waters and dump, take me down and bring me up. I want you to be that. And I said, Yes, I will do that. So we went to Black Rock, Pennsylvania, the Mennonite retreat. That day, I was, I double booked myself. Mm -hmm. So I had the beaver to be chaplain at Omos of Babies. Sometimes they call me, they didn't call me. So as we're getting ready to go down to the river, or down to where Black Rock has that pond, they call me. We need to go back to Wolves and Babies because we have to finish a demise, baby. 
And I went to my daughter and I said, Sarah, I really am so sorry. I can't be present. Please forgive me. Mommy, it's okay. I know you were a minister of many people, but mm -hmm. I felt so bad and so guilty. A few years, a few weeks after, I'm in my little office. And I say, Sarah, come. So Sarah, I would not be able to be present in your annual birthday. I want you to kneel right now and allow me to baptize you. It's very important for me. And she went down and poured the water over her. And she was standing. She said, Mommy, now I am an Anabaptist. <laughs> We have said many things about Anabaptists. Anabaptism is not a denomination of people. We have said that. It is a movement. It is not one that we can easily put in bylaws or church confessions. But Anabaptism is about being. It is a movement of the spirit. We cannot hold it or capture it. We cannot even own it. Yet, in actions, in practice, we strive to be that community of believers. Just as monasticism kept the spirituality alive of the Catholic Christian Church, the Christian Anabaptist movement preserved the Christ-centered teaching of the Church, returning to the earlier key stand of the Christianity, with John Dreyer has taught in the, the, the wonderful Spanish writings. In other words, Catholicism was busy preserving church over state. Protestantism was fighting for state over church. This formula of church and state together. But the Anabaptist leaders resisted the notion altogether choosing over the oppression of church and state. Anabaptist is not something we can read about it, but it wasn't until 1986 that I saw it in motion in Central America through my first MCC study tour. In my first Latin America consulta na bautista in the people of the mother, I saw our brothers wrestling in the context of the core war. What would it mean to be a church? So Anabaptism in the essential of the community of Hermeneutics needs to be contextual. What my Latinos brothers and sisters Anabaptists taught me is in the context of a profound sense of war, it flourish life. Later, as I went through the context of El Salvador, Nicaragua, Guatemala, and living in Colombia for seven years, I saw these Anabaptist leaders. Not as much saying I am an Anabaptist, more trying to be really faithful to the call of nonviolence. 
So I fell in love with their commitments and I wanted to learn from their experience. I wanted to learn more. I had studied in this beautiful seminary the history and then I lived in it. Even today, as I met Pastora Tania in Quito, Ecuador, a Latina leader, as an Ecuadorian, sometimes, let me back up, sometimes we put the Latinos' cultures all together. And we, each one of them, are quite distinct. So about these boundaries, we have attitudes and prejudices against each other. So when we become the kingdom of God together, we start or we start to work together, it is really breaking barriers. For Pastora Tanya as Ecuadorian to receive refugees from Colombia was a very big burial overcoming for her own culture. And I met her in Colombia last year as Carol and I were doing sister church. Now she felt called to work with the outcasts of newly arrived refugees. She inspired me with the passion of looking at the humanity of these Colombian refugees as her own cultural world. That's just one story of inspiration. Anabaptism is diverse by its very nature. It cannot be put in a box or claimed or owned exclusively by the Anabaptists. And we know that. It became the bomb of Gilead in times of war, requires a commitment and engagement to be disciples of the community. Anabaptists live alone. It needs to be faithful to the gospel and accountability and in the body of Christ. Now, in the book, a very old book, 1988, not too old, Stryden, I don't know if I'm saying Stryden, his last name, he's a seven-day Atlantis, and he writes about a book called Transformation of Christ, of the culture, excuse me, Transformation of Culture, is part, is part of the social ethic theory of what Richard Huber is trying to have written many decades before. Huber <coughs> five approaches of the problem of Christ and culture. But Stryden says the true Christian way of social transformation is the end of this way. 1988. The Anabaptist phrase solidarity with Christ centered with the discipleship and obedience. And I quote what he says, schooled in the teaching of the gospel, these Anabaptists gave life witness in their lives, offering the contrast, the contrast between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. Christ is the transformer of culture. And the Anabaptists knew the best way of doing that. Contrary, Newman believed in the Anabaptists were just separatists. So Christ against culture. The dilemma is that Christ and culture presents <coughs> two authorities, Christ on one hand and culture on the other. I want to give a parenthesis right now. As non-ethnic Mennonites in this country, we have done an extremely amount of work. And I want to invite you as well to do that work. We see sometimes missionaries arriving to our shores with not an identity. So they take our cultures. It's okay, we can model that. But part of the anti-racism training that we have receiving is you need to own who you are. And I don't think we've done that, the ethnic Mennonites have done that very well. 
In a new lens that I want to bring into this is Anabaptists were the political and religious mestizos. M-E-S-T-V-O-S, mestizos. I'm taking that terminology from Mexican and Central American scholars and the writing about what does it mean to be mixed race, mestizo, mestiza. So as I look at the, our history, I see these Anabaptists were a bunch of mestizos. <laughs> mestizos were children of the violent encounter between European fathers and indigenous <coughs> mothers. Neither European, rejected by the dominant white culture, nor Indian or indigenous. Argentinian songwriter, one of my favorite characters, um, Alberto Cortez has, No soy de aquí ni soy de allá. I am not from here or from over there. Mm -hmm. It tends to be like a sense of displacement. Such is the story of Red Juan the Baptist, driven out of Sulips, rejected by the reformers, moving from France, Germany, and Netherlands. They were the spiritual mestizos of their time, neither Catholic nor Protestant, becoming a distinct Christian movement of the 16th century. And about his children of the violent persecution in martyrs, survivors, living up a lifestyle of solidarity with Christ, living in the margins, and creating communities of sustainability. Versus depending on the mainstream medieval feudalism <coughs> and prescribed Christendom of their time. So I agree with Pastor. This sense of being this piece of produces a DNA that is quite disturbing in locations. And it comes out in a passive aggressive approach to a concept sometimes. Sometimes I just want to have a really good fight. You just don't show up. <laughs> was a mixed cloud group of people, all spiritual people seeking meaning, like maybe all of us are, they can't have end up in a Mennonite church. Very diverse. They were uh, illiterate peasants, scholars, teachers, ex-Catholic priests, nuns, for the Bequeen's communities. The very nature of this movement offered people from the margins a community of hope a community of mutual aid, a life relationship with Christ, producing faithful followers of Christ. The problem was that we close ourselves in the wish to survive. Mm -hmm. And then in 1683, by the wonderful invitation of William Penn to be part of the project of the Peaceable Kingdom, we believe that we can make it here. And still that fragmentation and brokenness is brought here, creating communities sometimes of isolation and protection. Now let me talk a little bit about culture. Culture is something I wear, I breathe, I am. Culture is what the church has been trying to take away from us people of color. Mm -hmm. The cost has been sometimes very, very high. So if culture is where I swim, where I breathe, where we live, and where we will die eventually, then this <coughs> have really lens in which we can say this does not, does not go in in this class. Tertulliano, second verse, century theologians, 
wrote many, many beautiful pieces. And he advocated for Christianity to be a way of life to reject corruption that Roman Christians. He was state in preach that Christians had no business being, being soldiers in the Roman Empire. That sense of making clear distinguishing what I and want to be involved in what I am not. Instead of creating isolated uh, bubbles of communities not connected with our environment. Simply stated, the intentions of moving the separation and the negative influence of culture. Now, cultural, I am talking about sometimes is more just secular. But even the religious culture today is contaminated. We create, we construct culture. And therefore, we can recreate cultures as well. As many of us trying to do cultures of peace as we respond within the culture of violence. Now, part of this dichotomy that I see in a lot of times comes from what I call the two kingdom theology. Both the reformed 16th century had its understanding of the two kingdom theology. And we as Anabaptists had ours. The armed conflict of the Lutherans, Reformed, and Catholic Church against the unarmed Anabaptists re producing refugees and displaced people in all of the world, later fleeing out into other countries. In my dissertation that I developed uh, 10 years ago, I critique this the two kingdom theology as a sense of if the Protestant looked at it as heaven and hell, we as Anabaptists saw it as an expression of political religious oppression. And therefore, we wanted to produce our own little world. With the mantra of saying, we are not of this world, we arrived to this country in trying to produce our own little subcultures. And sometimes it works and other times it doesn't. And eventually they arrive in our pews and make their way into our pulpits. This hermeneutics of trying to be very literal, biblicist occasionally has brought us into this two kingdom theology, producing consciousness or unconsciously what I call the DNA of naive expressions. DNA is denial, not accept acceptance of others or of another. As survivors of this movement, we, we carry, as Pastor Megan has said, extreme amount of survival guilt sometimes. unhealthy behavior perhaps between us and closing the doors. This the lens of denial of living in the bubble once created realities have not allowed men and us to accept to discriminate between this is evil and this is God's. Sometimes we forget that we are living in planet Earth, that we are living human beings. The ethnic Mennonite has confused traditionalism with the truth. We, the people of many colors, were asked to leave many of our occasions, our luggage behind, to embrace a new way. We were never able to question the German approach of hard work. And we never worked hard enough. Mm -hmm. We never went according to your standard. Mm -hmm. So the dominant culture is always right and ours is wrong. Maybe interesting, cute, but non-functional. <laughs> Our 
I've been married with ethnic Mennonite for almost 25 years. <laughs> I remember in the early age of my marriage, waking up and saying, this is hard work. Mm -hmm. Trying to explain, explain myself, why do I do this and I don't, don't, don't do that. And trying to make space to the ways I think and the ways I express has been a challenge. But the commitment and love has overcome that. In part of the challenge, I am married with a very conservative man. Brought up in upper Michigan. Conservative man. Not even my husband. <laughs> <laughs> and when we have struggled about the LGBTQ, gay, lesbian, um, bisexual brothers and sisters, we will never agree. But we have decided, because of the love we have for each other, that these differences were not separated. Amen. 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 And that love and that commitment, I wonder if we have it in our church. Mm -hmm. I lament that I do not see it from where I see it from the next to come. Another image that has followed me after I read James H. Holmes' book, The Cross and the Lynching Tree. Yeah. It was a profound book. Unfortunately, scholastic, white scholastic, do not honor what Professor Holmes is trying to say. Because he doesn't continue a straight narrative of the scholastic academic. He goes in cycles and he brings history and he brings songs and he brings his history. And it brings us back to history and it speaks of theology. And it does all of that in such a beautiful, passionate way. But because it's not linear, mm -hmm. it has been questioned in mm -hmm. My white colleague, Scott, um, academic scholars, have questioned that and have heard. But Professor Cohn, in his moving and brilliant pieces, presents that both Jesus' cross and the lynching tree represented in the worst, represents the worst in human beings. Combs describes the cross as a paradoxical religious, religious symbols, inverting, challenging the world's value system. And I want to say that just as both the cross and the lynching tree are connected, I connected the burning stake of our ancestors, burning at the stake. Mm -hmm. But sometimes my senses, um, as a pastor that struggled with many, well, many people suffering in the hospital and even in the church, we want to stay at the foot of the cross. Is it a foot in the cross and when we bear witness and then we need to move forward? The burning of the stake of our martyrs has been a sense of feeling proud of them. But let us remember they were brutally killed. There's nothing about this, beautiful about this, that our black brothers and sisters of the South were killed and lynched in public because of white supremacy. Jesus was innocently killed. Let us not forget that. Demonstrating and using Holmes words that suffering and death do not have the last word. It was those eyes witnessed the same close atrocities producing those historical words for us to remember. That's for our ancestors were the relatives of the fire. On occasion, 
think sometimes I feel that even our own autism of love is being tested over and mm -hmm. over. For today, our Anabaptist vision, I'm glad what Palmer Baker part Palmer Becker has done in what is the Anabaptist Christian. That brilliant and beautiful formula, Jesus is the center of our faith, community is the center of our lives, and reconciliation is the center of our world. What a Carol H. Bender, 1942, as president of the American Society of Church History, delivered in the Anabaptist vision. But we need to know that what's the context that this is happening in the moment of redefining ourselves or going back to who we are, Anabaptist movement <coughs> has the potential of influencing the culture around us. And sometimes we have to say, what is it that we have to transform and what can we connect our call to transform? I will conclude by saying this Anabaptist, we were the disputes of the 16th century, a mixed group of people with diverse beliefs coming together to seek Christ and becoming the community of the way. As mestizos, we cannot assimilate the culture that rejects us or accommodate this teaching merging into our Christian belief. The Christian mestizo has no other identity than that that comes comes from heaven, no other loyalty than to Christ, living a life in Christ centered. This is the expression of the transformation of discipleship lived in Christ and for Christ. In a culture of isolation and abuse of discriminatory internet, creating false communities of invisibles, detaching myself from the other and then calling those communities. No sense of accountability. Which was the plan of Jesus to select 12 men differently? And we know that there were more than these 12. As an alternative community of teachers and learners of the truth, it is our duty to actively resist the current culture that sometimes continuous, confuse us into other sets of values, compromising and accommodating the truth. The believer baptism was met with rejection. We created communities with assistance in order to live out our faith. Some experiences baptism of fire, others witness the atrocities this place of violence as Anabaptist mestizos let us resist the culture of violence. The prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples in John chapter 17, I have given them your word, and the word in the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just, I, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I'm asking you to protect them from the evil. This was Jesus' farewell prayer of blessing. And we have danced all the dances. Mm -hmm. From isolation, producing our own community, to accommodation and assimilation. The culture of violence has found its place within our churches. The truth that we hold as Anabaptists, we thought we had the truth. We do not allow the truth to hold us. Amen. In Spanish, may I read the scripture for you, the same I read in English. Yo les he entregado tu palabra y el mundo no 
que el mundo os los ha odiado porque no son del mundo, porque tampoco yo soy del mundo. No te pido que los quites del mundo, sino que los protejas del maligno. Protect from evil ones. We have learned to right now that isolation and separatism is not the way to go on. And if we live out to be that third way in the walk and others, join us. What does it mean to be a community that lives constantly in transformation? My intentions have been to just give you a few ideas that came in my mind. There's a community of hermeneutics as pastors and practitioners. I want you to wrestle with this. I do not have answers. One more thing. As a woman of color, I want to recognize all the people that are not ethnic Mennonite. They're like me. Latino, Latina. You can give me power to study to me. But the reality has been a lot of times that it has been still powers of tokenism. It's a lie, we cannot be mm -hmm. until we change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we're given the blessing, which we're given script. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is the way you do it. Mm -hmm. Bring your colors, bring your happy. But don't but we cannot be. I do not like the image of the mountain pot. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to be cooked in. <laughs> I love San Pocho. <laughs> it's a Spanish where we melt a lot of stuff in meats and in different foods. I love San Pocho. But I realize sometimes we have a San Pocho that does not bring about the flavor of rice. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So we are here. We are served. But in the moment of trying to bring about our ways of leadership, the reality of each. Mm -hmm. We try to fight. We are. But we know that our communities are going to be in the margins. The impact will be. As people of color, we've been put in a very difficult place with the fight between a we inclusive and not. And that's such a fair and so mm -hmm. Because in our communities, we get we have gay as brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. But we are choosing to love and walk with them in a different type of form in mm -hmm. It doesn't look the same. But we will talk about. The culture of violence has arrived when we commit violence to each other. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit of God protests, but we have to work within trying to not to harm to each other. Thank you for your support and your prayers. What I bear in my shoulders and my heart unto July is what all of you bear. Can you assist repeating the history of the show? 
what is it that we have to resist and what is it that we cannot resist? It's confusing at this time. Thank you for your support and thank you for being that community of this resource and this people. It's messy. The whole message, message is coming. Tell our students, can you want to be the pastor? Are you ready for the whole message? Are you ready for the whole message?